Hello one and all, welcome back to Under the Hood of Python, a guide for complete beginners. In this session, we are going to take a look at how does Python work under the hood and what are the different components which are seen in the Python execution flow. Okay, let us get into the details. First of all, who helps the machine to understand the Python instructions that we program? If you are with a computer science background, then definitely we are prompted with two most prominent answers. Is it a compiler who is going to do it for us? Or is that an interpreter who is going to help us in achieving the same? Before we figure out the answer, let us first draft the steps that Python takes to reach underlying machine or the processor on which it's running. Generally, Python instructions take different forms before they get really executed. Let us take a very simple Python code to understand what are these different steps that it goes through during its execution. Do not worry much about how do we write a Python code for now because we have a later section wherein we are going to talk in detail about each of the Python implementation and their syntax. Okay, here is our simple Python code wherein we are defining a function with name as foo, having a single input argument with name a, and in the code block inside function definition, we have a variable x declared and assigned to a number with value equal to six, followingly having a return statement with an expression performing sum of the declared variable x and an input argument a. So now, when we pass this Python code into its environment, it flows through the following phases. At first, the entire program that we are seeing here is something which is having uh, its resemblance very much closer to the English nomenclature. That's something wherein the developers or we people understand it in a much better way. But that does not seem to be the same for the underlying execution unit. To make it much optimized and efficient for the underlying execution unit to read the program code, at first, the entire English-like text present in the program is converted into the set of tokens. And this process of converting the complete English-like text in the program to the set of tokens or sequence of tokens is known as lexical analysis. Let us now take a look at how our sample code gets tokenized by our lexical analyzer. Here is our sample code that's completely fed as an input to the lexical analyzer unit and the intelligent lexical analyzer starts tokenizing the entire program by reading it from top to bottom. That is, from the first line, from the keyword def, till the last line written y. Lexical analyzer follows a specific mechanism to tokenize each of the keywords present in the program. Here are some details about it. Let's say it is going to tokenize the first keyword def. How does a token get generated? The generated token comprises of three entities. The first entity being the line number of the keyword, second being the character position of the keyword, third and the final being the keyword in itself. Let's take a look at it. The first keyword def is something which is getting tokenized and as I said earlier, it will be having three entities in itself. The value of the first entity will be the line number of the keyword, which is equal to one. And the second entity in the token being the character position of the keyword. For def or def, the character position is zero. Reason being, the def starts with a character d whose position is zero. So the first two characters, first two entities of the token being the line number and the character, the third entity of it is nothing but the keyword in itself. So the first token that is generated out of the first keyword present in the program is nothing but one, zero, and the keyword def in itself. With first two entities representing the line number, and the character position of the keyword. If you could see here, these three entities are grouped into a specific category called symbol. And this symbol is the actual token that gets passed to the next level of execution. So now, in a program, there may be more than one symbol that is present. To uniquely identify each symbol, we have these three entities formulated to define the symbol. Okay, so with this understanding of how a token gets generated, let us see how the other uh, keywords get tokenized. So the next immediate keyword which gets tokenized is nothing but the function name in itself, which is called as foo, whose line number remains same as def, but the character position changes. And both together with the keyword is grouped under the category called identifier. Identifier is one of the other category which will be seen in the complete program. Similarly, all the other keywords present in the program gets tokenized as shown below. So all the statements which are present in the program gets tokenized starting from the function definition with the last line of the program. So once it's done, the output token of the lexical analyzer is fed as an input to the next unit, which is called as parser. 
Rather than directly parsing the stream of raw text, it's often much easier and faster to break the input text into series of tokens like keywords, literals, operators, or identifiers, and then these tokens can be inspected and understood by the parser much more efficiently. Let us now start understanding how parser works and what it essentially performs. Parser now uses the previously generated tokens by the lexical analyzer and construct a tree using those tokens. It creates the tree by reading the generated tokens from the lexer and applying some set of grammatical rules or syntax rules of Python language to figure out whether it makes sense as a valid Python code. If it appears so, if it appears like a valid Python code, then it outputs a tree which is termed as an abstract syntax tree or ASD in short. This process of validating the tokens that are generated by the lexical analyzer and creating an AST or abstract syntax tree out of it is termed as parsing. Now the AST is basically a tree data structure whose nodes in the tree contain an element in the program. And we all know that a tree in general has a lot of branches connecting a child and a parent node. We will now see how our abstract syntax tree looks like. For example, let us take an expression x is equal to 6. This gets converted into an abstract syntax tree using its token and the abstract syntax tree looks something like this. At the first level, as a base parent node, it will have a binary expression which has an operator value of equal to. And to the left of this node, we have a child node and this child node has a reference expression x. Similarly, a right child node to the parent operator node having an integer literal expression 6. Okay, that seemed to be pretty difficult to visualize what we really meant now or what we really try to explain now. So let's have an actual visualization of one of the expressions in our program and see how the tree gets constructed. Let us now take a look at the visualization of the tree construction for one of the expressions y equal to x plus a in our program which is right before the return statement. Okay, here we go. At the first, there will be a parent binary expression node having an operator value of equal to with a left child node having a reference to the expression y getting constructed and then to the right of the operator node equal to there will be another child having an operator value equal to plus and this becomes the parent for the next two children who are having the reference expression equal to x and a. So let me repeat the flow again. We are going to have a binary operator node called as equal to which has two children. One is the reference expression y and again the other one is another operator plus. And this plus operator or the binary operator value plus becomes another parent to two new children called x and a which are the reference expressions in our complete tree construction. Every node in the tree contains an element in the program. In the same fashion, each and every tokenized instruction is converted into an abstract syntax tree by the parser, if and only if the grammar and the syntax of the Python code is valid. And the whole program then finally be represented as a big tree structure. Once the parsing is fully completed and a big tree structure is generated for the whole program, the output tree structure is then passed from parser to the next computational unit called as compiler. In this phase, the compiler understands the abstract syntax tree to produce something called as bytecode. Hold on for a moment. This bytecode is not the one which gets directly executed on the machine. This is a Python specific bytecode which is generated by the compiler. Okay. I think we will stop the lecture at this stage and continue the remaining topics in the next upcoming lecture. Before winding up the lecture, let us have a quick session recap on different topics that we have covered in this session. Here we go. We first understood the Python execution flow connects different phases before it reaches the machine or the underlying processor. Followingly, we came across two major components in the execution flow, one being the lexical analyzer and the other being parser. Lexical analyzer to tokenize the English-like text into a series of tokens that could be easily understood by the parser. And the parser takes those uh, set of tokens as the input and creates a tree termed as abstract syntax tree. Up next is the understandability of what a compiler is, how does the compiler read the abstract syntax tree details that's been provided by the parser, and what is compiler going to output us. Thank you for watching the lecture. Have a great time and take care of yourself. See you in the next lecture.